Welcome to another episode. Today we'll be testing and replacing the throttle position sensor. In this case I'll be showing how to do this on a Nissan Maxima. A pretty easy process to do. Uh, really all that you need is a multimeter, which we have. Get the factory repair manual for your vehicle and I'll explain throughout the video why you really want to get that. And we'll perform a couple of tests and we can go ahead pinpoint where the problem is and take care of that sensor. So that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. Now the harness for the throttle position sensor is located right here. It happens to be this brown connector on this Maxima. So the first step is we want to verify that power is getting to the sensor. So make sure that the ignition is off and disconnect the harness here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is turn the ignition key to the on position. So just turn the key, the ignition key to the on position but don't crank the car, just turn it to the on position. And then get yourself a good voltmeter or multimeter in this case, and we need to check the voltage going to this harness. So with the multimeter, you have two leads. This is for the negative terminal and the positive terminal. So this black wire, I'll attach to ground, and the positive will go to the uh, harness here. Now in this case I happen to have the factory repair manual so it shows me exactly which terminal to check. Uh, for your vehicle it's really the best thing to obtain a, a repair manual because you can really do these tests and pinpoint where the problem is. So let's go ahead and check the voltage here. And as you can see we are getting 5.1 volts so this is in good shape. Now if you don't get a reading here then you then you have a problem with the harness connector. Maybe a wire back here is frayed. Uh, you have a short somewhere, so you need to locate that. But if you are getting a reading here, then we can go on to the next step. Now the next test is to verify that we're getting sufficient ground. And to do that, again, you need your multimeter and you're going to the ohm setting or this is really a resistance test. So go to the ohm setting on your multimeter. Again, you need the negative terminal or the black wire coming from the multimeter. And I will attach that to the negative terminal on the battery. And we should see some resistance here. And we are getting resistance. So now we know that we do have sufficient ground. If you're not getting a reading here, then what you want to do is check the grounding terminals. And let me show you where it is on this car just so you guys have an idea of what to look at, or what to look for. If you take a look right here, you have two grounding terminals. Sometimes if these are frayed or a lot of rust build up, for example, you won't get a reading here. So make sure that you are getting a resistance or an ohms reading. If you're not, just check this connection here. But again, what you really want to do is get the repair manual for your vehicle and it will show you exactly where you need to check the, uh, the engine ground. So we verified that power is indeed getting to the sensor and we've also verified that we are receiving sufficient ground. The last step is to test the sensor itself or the uh, component. To do that, again, we'll be using the multimeter, using the ohm setting. We should see about 0.5 ohms uh, at close throttle. And as you open up the throttle, which you can right here, and as you move the throttle, the ohms reading should change slightly, uh, up to four ohms at most. So let's go ahead and just verify that this is indeed working. Again, if you don't see a reading here, then you've pinpointed where the problem is, and then you just go out and get yourself a sensor. But let's go ahead and do the test. And we should see in the ballpark of around point 5.6, maybe maybe 0.7 ohms, which we do. Now let's also check it if we open up the throttle a little bit. And as we increase the throttle, the resistance increases as well. So we've pinpointed and verified where the problem is. So in other words, if you're not getting a reading here, or maybe even if your reading is way off, then you need to replace the sensor. So by doing these tests, you can really pinpoint where the problem is. Again, I can't stress enough that you really should get the uh, repair manual for your vehicle and you can pinpoint exactly where the problem is, do the work yourself, and save some money in the process.